No. <laughs> hey y'all. Welcome back to my channel. This is Abby with Abby Reviews. This is gonna be my review and recap for Chasing Atlanta Forever Season 6, Episode 4. Episode 4. Um uh, yeah. This is also a get ready with me because we go on live later on tonight. However, today's going to be the most basic face ever, which is why I'm not doing this live. So, I don't think y'all really care about me putting on some skin tint and um, an eyelash. So, at least this, base, this basic of a face. So, we're going we gonna to jump into the food la la. And see what this episode is giving. Telling you, Andario, I'm putting on makeup today. Listen, I'll fight you if I have to. You stop trying to make me cry. Okay? All right. Thank you. Here we go. Okay, but can we talk about it for real? All right. While I do some pre-prepping things to my face. Miss um, Mama's. Okay, so first we, we go back to the candle situation. Uh, and what's the baby name? Oliver goes to check on Troy and Dominique after the altercation and King came walking out. And Dominique is like, really, I'm just trying to be motivated. I can't fight with a bitch. You ain't got nothing to lose, blah, blah, blah. All of these things. Um, they talk about they the OGs now because they've been there the longest, which is factually true. Um, and how, you know, they just go and try and keep it together and keep it moving forward and try and have, you know, good rapport with each other and all that good stuff. Lovely. Let's get to Miss Tony Bryce in this no situation. Like, I am genuinely I know you want your face to, to look like how you want it to look. If you got the money to make said changes to your face and body to get what you envisioned, absolutely go for it. However, when the medical professional people are telling you, maybe you might not want to do that because it's not going to give you what you are looking for and it's, it might look crazy. I think maybe you should listen. And everybody feels differently about their facial features and their structures. Um, Miss Tony has a, an issue with her her nose and and how it looks on her face and um and how I think feminine it looks on her face. I don't know. It looks her nose looks feminine to me. So I, who is me? What do I know? Um, and I am not a person because there are things that you can do with makeup. We all know you can contour your nose and make it look thinner and more pinched and keep the butt boop and all of those things. I am not a person who contours my nose because I like my nose on my face. I feel like if it was narrow and like the little ski slopey little button boop thing, it would make my face look funny because that's not the nose that belongs on my face. But I get people out people who have that it's an insecurity for them and, and if you have like I said if you have the money and the means to fix it then by all means please do so but I, I'm just concerned like I'm all for advocating yourself because doctors don't know everything they do not I'm not even going to pretend like doctors know everything but they do know some things and if you are trusting these people to cut into your face if they are giving you some 
advice about things. Um, maybe you should listen, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to have to recheck this thing. She's not. She's not doing what I want her to do. But yeah. That's just, who, who is me? What do I know? What do I know? <laughs> what do I know? I don't know. It just seems like, because you see people who keep getting surgery after surgery because they're in search of this perfected look in their head. And then they get so far out there, they don't look anything like themselves. So I'm always curious as to why do doctors allow these people to continue to get surgery after surgery after surgery? Like, you look crazy. After a point, you don't look crazy, baby. Please stop. I don't know. And she's talking about eventually getting a nose job. She just got something else called aeroplasty and she actually wants the rhinoplasty which is a permanent solution to this but I don't know Some it's something about it just didn't sit right I don't know but we gonna continue uh, that was a lot <laughs> That happened in that little okay. That was a lot. Uh, I am gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. I'm, I'm working on my brow, so if you see me looking and I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get Letitia and Latavia together because they do. <sighs> um. I don't care. I do not care. Hold on. Okay. So I'm gonna get to the rest to the base and everything. Get just I'm just I'm trying something new. I'm doing my brows first. This is work with me. Um uh, so Oliver and King Kane, they Oliver's throwing a sex toy party. He got King Kane with him. Um, they looking at dicks and all oh, manners of things. Wonderful. So Seven comes in and they have a conversation, and Oliver introduces Seven to Kane. And they have a little conversation. He's, and it was like, well, how did the candle thing go? Blah blah blah. He's like, and I was like, maybe you should ask Kane how it went. And Kane proceeds to tell, start talking about what happened and how he felt about it and what he thought from his perspective, what happened. I don't, listen, I know I'm old and forgetful, but I don't, I didn't hear him say anything like crazy or unless they edited it, something out that he said, I didn't see, I didn't see it or hear anything that King Kane said that was disrespectful to Troy and or Dominique. I didn't hear him call them out their names. Maybe I missed it. Y'all know y'all like catch stuff. So y'all let me know. But I feel like Seven's response to what King Kane said was, wasn't warranted. It's not like, let me tell you about these two stupid motherfuckers, blah, 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 da, 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 and fuck these dumb bitches and blah, 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 and all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, I didn't see. Let's y'all tell me, did I miss something? Because I don't feel like what King K said warranted the response that he got from Seven. But once Seven gave them him that response, he immediately matched her energy. And then she was like, Pineapples, I gotta go because I can feel you know, I'm on these hormones and how I 
and re it's not this is not how I normally would react to such things, but because my emotions are all over the place because I'm on these hormones, I got a safe word. So if I feel like it's finna, if I feel like it's finna go left, you know, I have this safe word with uh, Dario, you know, so I'm going to remove myself from the situation. So she removes herself from the situation and she gets in the car and she immediately gets on the phone with Meek Meek and, 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 and Troy. And she, I guess she's explaining her side of it and why she went to the left so quickly. I still don't understand why she went to the left so fast. Like, I don't have an issue with you going left in defense of your friends, but I didn't see anything that he said that will require the response that you gave him. That's what I'm saying. So Oliver comes out and he talks to, to Seven and he's like, uh, Lord, she done already called the children. And he's like, King K wants to start over, blah, 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 blah. So they come together. King K says, well, first of all, I was just trying to give you my perspective and my opinion of what happened and da 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 and you went completely left. Yes, I know my race is lifting. You say something about it, you're anti-black. Um, and, you know, I don't beef with trans women and I don't go back and forth with trans women. And then he and the confessionalists talk about some uh, let the butch queens uh, argue with each other and don't jump into butch queen business. Now, I didn't know that was a thing that you're not allowed to argue. And I, because y'all know I'm an ally to the community, but is that a thing? Like, you're not allowed to argue with. People like the, the lesbians aren't allowed to argue with the gays. The gays aren't allowed to argue with the trans girls. I'm so confused about what's happening and how that dynamic is supposed to work. So if somebody could explain that to me, that would be fabulous. Until then, I'm going to jump back into the episode because I don't want my review to be as long as the episode. I'll be right back. Okay, so our next scene is with our lovely Mr. Tonka. Well, first, no, I take it back. It's with Tramel. Uh, our good Judy Tramel is, I got to download this song, is doing a video for his song, Favorite. The song is a bop. It's super cute. I'm down for the song. And so Dominique is doing the creative direction for the video. And so they're just having a little conversation you know, about Dominique stretching out from not just dog grooming, um, his dog grooming business, but also doing creative direction. And he's taking um, a lot of inspiration from Tiana Taylor, um, which I, I we love to see it. We love to see multiple streams of income, get multiple bags in multiple different ways. Listen, listen. We are here and co-sign all of that. So we get to Tonka, who is meeting his uncle, his dad's brother. Apparently his dad's brother was um, at, the, at the big house, you know, and I, don't, he's, I think this is his first time meeting him. You know, I guess they weren't, he was really close to his dad's side of the family. Um, and he told his uncle said told him like he he's like I'm proud of you, you know. And me and your, I guess Tonka doesn't have uh, uh, excuse me um, a good relationship with his daddy, so they don't speak. Um, I don't know the regularity if at all. Um, I think his uncle is gonna try and bridge. That particular relationship um because he says i talk to your dad about you all the time he's like i'm proud of you your dad is proud of you you know and um Tonka told a story about how uh you know he has uh i guess i want to say a type of pigmentation uh on the lower half of his body where his face is one color but his neck and his body is a different color um 
I don't know if that is exactly hyperpigmentation, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, and so, and how his grandmother and dad embarrassed him, talk about he not cleaning his body correctly because his neck is dirty because it's so much darker than his face. And then they got a bucket of water and bleach and soap and made him scrub his neck in front of them for them to understand, no, that's just the color of my body. It's not that my body is dirty. I know how to wash myself. And he's like, it's things like that that has, is, was the impetus in me just really not coming around the family anymore. Not that I'm going to talk about his grandma, but that sounds abusive to me. Listen, why would you do that? Uh, but they seem to come to a good resolve. Um, Tonka spoke of some um, times he felt like he wanted to unalive himself. Um, and how he had to manage that and, and get to the other side of that. So it was a beautiful conversation. I'm glad that his uncle came in and was like, I love you and I'm proud of you. And and if don't nobody else say it, I, and I know you to know that, that I know who you are and I see you and, you know, I still love you and I'm proud of you which is all any child wants to hear from their family. That's all. That's, that's, that's really it. So um, that's how that segment ended. We're going to jump past the next commercials and see what else is coming. I have come, I have come to the conclusion that Ondario is determined to make me cry every damn episode. And this time it's Wayne's fault. It ain't even Willow this time. So we at all of the dick and balls party. Right? And so they're having the conversation. And so Willa shows up. The people is there. I don't know what's happening. Right here. I don't know what that is. Let's see. I don't know. Uh <laughs> And so they're having a conversation. What is this? Okay. They're having a conversation, and King Kane is explaining about him and Seven and the fallout they had at the at the uh, toy store. And all of those things. And they say to Willow, well, Willow, we don't want you to be upset because we know that you and Seven, you you and Seven are real good, good girlfriends. And please just judge me off of you getting to know me. Don't, because I've had previous altercations with some of the people that you're close with. Um don't judge me off of that. Just get to know me for yourself. And then he started talking about he was maliciously maligned. What? When were you maliciously maligned? <gasps> when did that happen? Where were we when that happened? I'm trying to figure it out, babies. I'm trying to figure it the fuck out. Um, but yeah, talk about he was maliciously maligned and all of these things, and then they they brought Kendra into the situation, and then uh, what's the baby's name? Jaquan starts to say, "Well, I think most of that that wasn't even really directed towards uh, uh what's that baby name." Dominique, it was more out of hurt, and that more had more to do with Wayne than it had to do with Dominique. And Wayne gets upset because you know they they barely communicate, and he doesn't know how to fix it because they're not talking to each other. His children's is not answering his calls. His mama is sick. Like Wayne got a lot on his shoulders, and he's trying to 
get it together and figure it all out to where he's taking opportunities for himself and he feel like his career is starting to take off and he wants of course he wants Kendra to be with him because it's been the two of them against the world this whole time and now that his career is starting to take off a little bit more than what I, I assume what hers is doing she done broke ties and got new management and all these other things and he doesn't want to feel like he built his career off the, her back and then doesn't give back to her and stuff. And it's overwhelming and the baby in the bathroom crying. And now I'm crying because he's crying. And then Jay Moore comes in there and have a conversation with the baby. Oh, Jesus. It was a lot. But it was good. It was good to get Wayne's side because a lot of people don't be talking crazy about Wayne like he's not a real person with real feelings and like he doesn't have a side in all of this as well and I've been saying for a minute you can't pour from an empty cup baby now and you can't want it more for somebody than they want it for themselves as much as you want it for Kendra she got to want this for herself you can want it for, you can want it for her uh, and put the opportunities in front of her. But if she's not, she don't want it. If she's not grabbing it, then I don't know what more you want. What what can you do? What more can you do? Honestly. But they was able to get it together at the end. And uh, that was how the episode ended. I enjoyed it. I thought I was going to make it through without crying. I got through the Tonka stuff without crying. Him talking to his uncle for the first time. What are you doing, Hope? Uh, him talking to his uncle for the first time without bawling like a big ass baby. Uh, so I thought I had made it through the sad part. Without crying, and then Wayne got me at the damn end. Damn it. <sighs> but this has been my review or recap of Chase and Dallas. Um, it's not Chase and Dallas. Chase and Atlanta. Uh, season four, episode, season six, episode four. I don't know numbers, nothing. I'll see y'all later tonight when we go live to discuss the episode with L. Teddy and Really B so we can get their perspectives. And I will see y'all then. Okay? Peace out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to stop making me damn cry. I know that.